Peace, family. What's good? It's your man, Ocean the Ghost. We back at it. The freedom fight continues. Woo. I want to thank you for coming. I very much appreciate your time for taking this opportunity to try to build with me. Now, this term that we're going to get into today, it might be a familiar term to you or you may never have heard it in your life. But it's a... Uh, the reason I'm a it's it's multiple reasons why I'm I'm bringing this term to my page, and one of the reasons is because you know I got into a little disagreement with a couple of people over the weekend who were telling me that how hard I go and fight against white supremacy is really not necessary. It's not necessary for me to go that hard because. I'm just me and I can't possibly affect the world, right? So I heard this word before and I, I heard I heard my guy, you know what I'm saying? I heard a few people say this say this term before. Cognitive dissonance. Okay. Now, you know, I want to start with the definition. Now the definition, when I looked up the definition of cock. <clears throat> cognitive, it says as related to cognition. So I instead I got the I got the definition of cognition right here, okay? Now so now it says the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. And then you know, I guess it says uh another another part of that definition it says a result of this, a perception, a sensation, a notion, or intuition. So, basically, being being cognitive is you know recognizing what's going on with the situation inside of your inside of your mind and how your mind actually correlates situations to the way that life is now. Let's see what this word dissonance mean. All right. Let's see what this word dissonance mean. All right. The def oh, let me. Oh, my bad. The definition of dissonance is the lack of agreement. The dissonance between truth and what people want to believe. All right. So it says, uh, especially inconsistent between the belief one holds and between one's actions and one's beliefs. All right. And it says in an instant, an instance of such inconsistence, inconsistency or disagreement. All right. So dissonance. Let me read that again. I want to make sure that I got a clear knowledge of it. Lack of agreement. That's dissonance. Basically is lack of agreement. All right. So you, you, now let's put these two terms. I got. The, let's also let's just put these two terms together and define it in that state too. It said now cognitive dissonance is the state of having ins inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. Now, I think that this is one of the biggest problems that. My people face today. Not only my people, but people in society as a whole, but definitely my people, man. We got a uh, strange way of knowing that shit is fucked up, but finding just enough leeway in a situation to justify it. Now, I want to give the most common example that I got last night when I was doing my research of cognitive dissonance, and it it all it correlates to what do you know smoking. So again, here we go again. I never make a video just to say you 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 you. No, it's me too. Okay, I make these video for me too. I make them for me first, as a matter of fact. So, but the, the the way that you can understand 
cognitive dissonance is even though we're going to take a cigarette smoker, even though that person know that, you know what I mean, cigarette smoking is unhealthy for them and, you know, people die of cancer every day. But in order to rationale, to, to make it rational, a rational decision to smoke, then you can come up with a some type of distorted excuse to let you make yourself feel like it's not that bad. You could say, well, uh, such and such lived to 96 and he smoked cigarettes every day of his life. So that's, that's a, that's a, uh, example of cognitive dif dissonance. Cause you know that what you're doing is some bullshit or you know what's happening is some bullshit, but in your mind, you find a way to justify it. Now I want to relate this. Now the term is really, okay, I'm getting a, a, ahead of myself. Oh, now where this term originated from, this term was originated in the 50s, 1950s. You got this psychologist. I forgot his name. I'm not good with names. You can tell me your name right now and I forget your fucking name. But the name is not important. Although, if you want to, I do would like, would like to get this guy credit, so just Google cognitive dissonance and it'll tell you the nigga name. I forgot his name. But what happened was the psychologist, he, uh, it was a cult. He joined the cult. All right. He joined the cult knowing damn well that the uh, beliefs that the, the people in this cult, this was, uh, it was some dumb belief, but he, he joined the, Okay, what these people believe was it was 1950 something, 57, 56, but they believed on December the 21st, 1950, whatever, was the world was going to come to an end. And the only people that were safe were the people of this cult who was, uh, <laughs> <coughs> you know that is, that the guy. But the, the only people who safe from this world combusting was the people of this cult. That's because they had this vital information that either no, either people did not know or they did not act upon. So the only people that was going to be left after December 21st was the people of this cult. Now, this psychiatrist, he knew. Psychologist, whatever the fuck. He knew that ain't no way in the fuck that these motherfuckers know when the world gonna end. But he wanted to study they he wanted to study how did they dealt with after that day passed and the world they end and how how were they gonna come to terms with they had been duped or they had been believing a boatload of lies and would you would you believe that the people that he studied that they all had reasons why like some of them said, they saved the world through their faith. And it, it was just different excuses why uh, the world didn't end on the day that they had invested all their marbles in the world ending. So he they found numerous excuses. And this is when he coined the term. This is when that scientist coined the term cognitive dissonance. So you can see it's like it's a psychological thing, definitely. It, it also is it also deal with people in relationships. Okay, you could be in an abusive relationship with somebody who always are. Uh, you know, I keep it gutter on my channel, so we're gonna keep it gutter right now. So you can be a chick. Now I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go from a, a dude point of view because I'm a dude. So you can be a dude in a relationship with this girl, right? This is you love this girl. She you 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 just want to spend your life with this girl. But this girl is not good for you. This girl cheat on you. This girl, you know what I'm saying, only with you for your money. One of these type of situations, but you know that girl bad for you. 
it's a relevant thought in your mind like damn I need to stop fucking with this girl mm. but that thing thing down there get so I like the way I like the way it feel inside that thing thing so much that I'm willing to disregard her cheating okay I'm willing to disregard knowing that she see me as a trick and a, as a money tree just because I like what was, what's in between her legs. Now, that's a prime example of cognitive dissonance, and you can flip it if you're a woman and you need to understand it from a woman's point of view. You can, all, it's, you can see that. So, the relationship that's in question today The reason I'm on this video with you talking talking this shit about a, a cognitive let me how you say the word? This is new to me. Cognitive dissonance. The relationship that we're gonna discuss today is the uh relationship between black America or black people in general and white supremacy. See, for the last five hundred years. At least, white supremacy has had a stronghold on this society, man. To the point where the black man don't know how to hunt. The black man, as a whole, you, brother, right there on the other side of this video, you might know how to do all this shit. But as a whole, the black man don't know how to hunt. The black man don't know how to farm. The black man don't know how to get a business up and going and keep it running for generations and generations and generations. The reason why, because they took white supremacy wanted to take all of this stuff out of the hands of the black man. He didn't want the black man to ever become more powerful than he was at his mo his least powerful point. That's the way that they intend on keeping this white supremacy system going. For the next 500 years. But they done made it real convenient. They made it real convenient to be docile and just take your crumbs. Because as long as you, if you're willing to just take what we give you and not demand anything else. And understand that you are at the bottom of the totem pole. But we going to give you just enough to survive. If you're willing to live up under them terms, then you can skate through. And you can live, you can live, you can be comfortable in this white supremacist America. As long as you're willing to take the smallest amount possible. So, when you got a brother like me, who, who would like to say, no, uh, that smallest amount possible, I know I, I, you can keep that. I'm demanding what's rightfully mine. And then you got, so then you got the people who scared. I'm, I'm going to call them scared. You got the people who scared what white supremacy going to say or going to do. So they so they are, they want to tell you that, you know what I'm saying, you, you out of pocket. Or they want to tell me that I'm out of pocket. And I can't agree. I feel like, no, I'm not out of pocket. You just way the two fuck far in pocket. With what the fuck they got going on, see? The relationship element come from it's more like a uh, that was crazy. It's more like a, a parental aspect. And cause have you noticed that on all of these uh like uh Walmart Wendy and parking lot Peggy, all these white women and white men calling the police on Black people for nothing. They they want they operating out of a sense of we owe them an explanation, like out of, from a, a parental authority figure. Even though they ain't the police of shit, but even if they are the police, you still ain't no authority figure over to me. But they ain't even got no badge and then they feel like I gotta I got you gotta get them your ID. You gotta explain what you doing in the area. I don't give a fuck if you do got a key to this building. If you don't give me your ID, I'm not letting you in. And they calling the police on these people. And the police showing up and 
perpetuating the notion that they have for even calling because they shoot niggas and locking them up behind this shit. And my people, my black people, we see this shit as common as day. But we can still, we still find a way to say that, you know, maybe, maybe whatever, maybe he, he should have just showed the ID or he should have just complied. And if he would have did this, then he wouldn't have ended up in that situation. Now, clearly, clearly, clearly you can see that that black man was in the right for being at his own fucking apartment building. That black lady was in the right for taking her kids to her pool in her complex where she lived, where you got to flash your ID, your, your, your building security pass to even get in the pool. Clearly, you she right, but you got people that'll say she should have just showed her ID. But why do I got to show you any fucking thing if you know the fuck that if you know I'm right? That's what I'm talking about. If it's apparent that I'm right, see, that's where cognitive dissonance come into play because your actions are not adding up with your beliefs. So that's a sickness. If your actions don't add up with the, what the fuck you feel should be happening, it's a sickness of the, it's a psychology, it's a psychologist. I mean, what it's a psychological type of thing that you dealing with, and it's this disease. I'm gonna call it the disease or disorder. Is prominent in the black community. It's more niggas that fall subject to they to they dissonance than that don't. And I don't know what happened to me. And I'm not going to say that I'm totally above cognitive dissonance because I'm sure that if I go through my life that I can find situations where I've been acting in similar ways. But it's a new day, man. It's 2019, man. Now, one thing that we know about power and the people that's in power, they never going to just willingly hand that power over to you. No matter if how long you've been oppressed, how long they had their foot on your, your neck, they even if they they might get feel sorry for your dumb ass, but they still ain't gonna hand you no power. So you gotta take it. So when you telling me to when you when you uh looking at me to be this docile guy, there is no way in the fuck that I could possibly be. You know that's it's not going to happen. I love you, but I'm not changing who I am because you you want to uh you scared that if I book the jet like I plan on doing, you scared that white supremacy going to strike out against me, well, or you scared that we're going to be left behind. I say to that we have been left behind. And I'm not scared of no consequences that come to me for uh, fighting for my people, even though these niggas don't, a good percentage of them don't deserve for me to be fighting for. But it's enough of a percentage of them that do deserve my my will and my effort that I am going to continue this fight. Mainly this 13-year-old that's sitting there in the other room right now mini version of me, so I gotta fight. So you sound foolish telling me not to fight. You sound foolish telling me to be a coward in front of my son and not call out the bullshit when I see the bullshit. I'm not gonna run around on no motherfucking coon by ya and get I said coon C O O N by ya voyage trying to be all buddy buddy with you know what I mean? The dominant society. No. I'm fighting for what's, what's mine, what I need to take out of that dominant society. It start with a motherfucking reparation check. So, yeah. I got a problem with, you know what I mean? I got a problem with you giving in to your dissonance. Especially, I got a problem with you begging me for, to give in to your dissonance. Don't beg me to give in to your dissonance. It's not going to happen with somebody who feels strong about these situations as I do. You you coming at me telling me I don't like your tone and you don't talk nice and 
Who the fuck listening to them nice niggas when they a nice nigga? I ain't never heard a nice nigga demand shit and get it. But a hug? I don't want no motherfucking hug. I don't need no motherfucking hug from white supremacy telling me that, oh, well, I see you over there. I ain't going to do shit for you. I'm not going to make this shit better. I'm not going to rectify what we did over these 500 years, but uh, at least I see you over there. No, that ain't shit. That ain't shit. You got to give me, you got to give me the total sum of mine before I shut the fuck up. I'm either I'm gonna die, or you gonna give me my total sum of mine, or you gonna hear this shit. And it's time. It's it's about more than just talking on the internet, though. It's about time to start putting different type of, you know, plans in action, man. To we got to We got to get past. We got to get past feeling like we don't deserve. We deserve, we we lucky to get what they give us. No. We built this some bitch on our back. I'm going to always go back to that. We built this, I'm going to always go back to it. We built this country on our back. So with that being said, I in order for me to feel uh, like a upstanding member of this society, I got to be respected as as an upstanding member of this society. And that means that all all debts owed to me got to be paid. How the fuck you build a country on my back and still charge me every day to live in the same country that I built on my back? With your motherfucking taxes and all of this bullshit, man. When you got the real criminals, the the real criminals wearing suit and tie. And they got motherfucking uh, uh, office in the uh, office in the Senate building, a Congress up here making decisions about my life. And you expect me to give in to some dissonance uh, cause I feel a little, little shaky about what the next step gonna be. It couldn't be worse than just taking, just letting the motherfucker spoon feed me Take this little bit, come back again, got them three weeks after you hungry, come back then. Do you understand what the fuck I'm saying? Do you understand how dissonance is a problem in uh, black society today? It's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard for me to look at my people in my face who who looking for somebody to, that is willing to, to fight this fight with them. I'm willing to put it all on the line. That's why I got my face on the camera right now because shit, I'm, it is what it is. First off, I ain't scared of death. That's the only thing you could do to me. It kill me. And when you kill me, then my assignment is over. So, how is it anything else that you you know what I mean got that's gonna scare me away from this standpoint that I got? You know, pain is temporary. Whatever whatever type of pain that you might be able to inflict on me, that's temporary. It ain't gonna take away from what's in my mind and what's in my heart. And that's the reason why I'm out here fighting this fight every day. Cause I know. I know what I know, and I know that it's a very good possibility that after I leave this place, this earth that we live on, I might be coming back. And if I come back 30 years after I die, one minute after I die, and this motherfucker is still in the same condition as it, as it is right now, and I ain't do shit to try to change it. Then I don't deserve. I deserve to be a slave when I come back. Y'all niggas deserve to be slaves when if y'all come back for not fighting this shit. For being scared to fight this shit. I'm starting to see why you always want to say, well, the motherfucking African kings, 
He he sold some of them niggas in. I see why the fuck why. I see why he sold y'all niggas into slavery. Cause y'all niggas scared of anything that this motherfucking white man tell you. If he tell you that the grass is turquoise today, then motherfucker, it ain't green no more. It's turquoise called the white man said it. I see why these I see why the African king sold y'all niggas. I see why. Anyway, man, I'm getting a little bit too. Who? Let me bring this shit back down to a normal level. I don't. It really fucked me up though this weekend that I felt like I was under attack, man. You know, and like I said, it ain't. I love these people even more than I did yesterday. So don't get that shit twisted. But it, I'm glad. I'm glad that they came at me like that because it gave me uh, inspiration to come out here and speak to my people and let them know that. You know, we survive. We fighters, man. If you fucking with me, if you rocking with me the long way, then you know what this shit is all about. This shit is all about demanding our motherfucking power, demanding our motherfucking reparations, or we not giving y'all, we not giving y'all our vote. Okay, we, that, that's the only way we can, that's the only, that's our only move we got right now, taking our vote. But that motherfucker is effective. It's an effective move. Then you see Trump, Trump in the White House, and he finna go back again 2020. Now you, like I said, I ain't no fucking Republican. Give a fuck about Donald Trump. I know he don't give a fuck about me. But that's my type of white supremacy. The one that I know don't give a fuck about me. Instead of you goddamn running around making me think that you got my best interest at heart. And the whole time you working on the goddamn, the, the low key, you a low key white supremacist. No, that ain't my, I, I want my white supremacy up front in my face. I love it like that. Because this is the same energy that we got for each other. Huh? I got to add them folk yesterday who was at me. Telling me that I, 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 need to, I need to relax and I need to calm down. And it, it, you know what I mean? But they really was on some shit like, Scared of what could happen to me because these people love me, but I I can't run around and be scared of that man. Not when shit is eating at my heart, and I will thank the Lord for my pops because he was right there. He let everybody say what they had to say, and he did come to you know what I'm saying step up and say that when you a man like I am and you on a mission from God, that God won't leave you alone about. You think I want to come on this bitch and be mad about white supremacy every day? No. This nigga won't leave me alone about the shit. He tell me every day, why well, you know you got to get on there and try to show your people something. Whoever is fucking with you a long enough, the long, long enough way to click on your video and see what we can, what we building on today. Well, I got, this is what he dealing with me with every day. So don't tell him, so... To them people, I'm off the subject of cognitive, cognitive dissonance by a long way by now, but to, to certain people who say, who say, God said this to me and God said that to me. Well, if God said that to you and you heard him, I'm acting like a motherfucker over there. Ain't nobody over there. I'm just... This is where I'm at right now. But if God said that to you, and you heard him, clear as day, recognized it with God's voice, and that's what he told you, well, why in the fuck he won't say shit to me? Why he can't say shit to me? Because he told me something different than what he told you? Or how you know that you heard God's voice? And how, what make the voice I hear the devil and the voice you hear God? Do you understand what I'm trying to say, man? All of this weekend, it is what it is. Uh, let's cool by y'all. Well, if that's how you feel, I'm not asking you to fight. I'm out of the business of convincing people. I'm not trying to convince nobody to join no fight with me. Because if you know what the fuck I know, you're going to be on the front line anyway. Because these motherfuckers is... You are the enemy to them motherfuckers. I know I'm the enemy. I know I'm the enemy. 
You better recognize the shit. Cause when you you got to know that who your enemy is to know that when you see this motherfucker, the fight is on. A lot of motherfuckers it's on sight with. That's the way that the game is played. It's detrimental, man. This is detrimental shit right now, man. So I hope, I hope earlier in the video before I went down the path that I went that you got a little bit of a understanding of what cognitive dissonance is, man. Like I said, I'm really just starting to get understand what this word is too. So I'm sure I think that I will be touching back on this subject the more information is presented to me and the more that I can soak it in, you know what I mean? I, I got different strategies of soaking up my information so i'm not willing to divulge you know how i do my research right now because that's just it'll just be another reason for another something for somebody to second guess and i i'm not into giving out any ammo to people to allies or the opposite or allies right now but I just want to thank the creator for standing on my ass and telling me that even though a multitude of people is telling me that this is not the thing to do, but who I thank you for standing on my ass and telling me that this is the thing to do. And I thank the creator for letting me cuss when I talk to him. I thank the creator for always providing for me and my family. Yes, I thank the creator. I got a, a very... I got a great relationship with the creator. And he stay on my ass every day and tell me this is what the move is. This is what the fight is right here. For my people. This ain't about me. It's about me, but it's about way more than me, man. Why in the fuck you think I'm on here? But anyway, I hope you I hope you I hope you got a a a a, a, a glimpse to what cognitive dis dissonance is and you can see how it affects your people and my people and all the people in the world. And I, I hope that you appreciated my time and my emotion that I spilt on this shit. All right. It is. It, it's your boy. Ocean the ghost. Every time you come in here, man, it's going to be a full dosage of truth. Every time we are.